A Vivianite tutorial. This is the mineral Vivianite. Vivianite is an iron phosphate mineral named by Abraham Gottlob Werner in 1817 in honour of mineralogist John Henry Vivian, who had discovered deposits of the mineral at Wheel Kind in St Agnes, Cornwall. Vivianite forms in a range of geological settings, principally in the upper oxidation zones of ore deposits and in organic rich environments with low levels of oxygen and sulphide. Vivianite is found more or less worldwide in various aquatic systems, including freshwater and marine sediments, waterlogged soils, bogs, hydrothermal veins, as well as deposits, archaeological settings, and also in pipework and within the vicinity of effluent and water sewage plants. In terms of geological location, Bolivia has provided the collector with the world's finest examples of Vivianite. The finest Bolivian Vivianite occurs in transparent, gemmy, dark green crystals with distinct, sharply angled terminations. The Kerch Peninsula in Ukraine is well known for exceptional Vivianite sprays within fossilised shells and large Vivianite crystals, including rare violet and multicoloured varieties. Interestingly, Vivianite is also known to form encrusted patches upon dead bodies, owing to the phosphate that is commonly present in the hard bits of bones and teeth. If a cadaver ends up buried in waterlogged conditions, anaerobic digestion releases the phosphate from the decaying remains, and then this slowly combines with the iron and water to form Vivianite. For example, partially blue human remains have been recovered from graveyards, past war zones and alpine lakes and glaciers. In fact, the presence of Vivianite can even help archaeologists and forensic researchers determine what exactly happened to a person's body after their death. An interesting example of this mineral being used in such a way was when the blue-tinged skeletal remains of the crew members of an American B-26B aircraft from 1963 were recovered in Vietnam. When studies revealed the blue coating substance to be Vivianite, the forensic investigators were led to conclude that the crew must have been buried in waterlogged soil, dosed with iron from their corroding aircraft, creating the ideal conditions for the blue mineral to have arisen. Researchers have also discovered that a Vivianite coating on historic finds, such as bones and teeth, can factor in slowing their rate of decay, often improving the archaeological value of affected specimens. Vivianite can occur as crystals, masses or concretions. Sedimentary Vivianite primarily occurs as an earthly coating with no visible crystals on the remains or leaves, fibres and decaying root matter in bog lakes and paddy fields. More impressive radiating crystalline structures of Vivianite occur more typically within fossilised teeth and bone specimens from waterlogged conditions close to a source of iron. Vivianite crystals are usually prismatic, but may occur as a stellate or star-shaped group or in crustaceans with bladed or fibrous structures. Generally, pure Vivianite is pretty colourless. However, as oxidation causes the mineral to change colour, examples are typically found as deep bluish-green prismatic or flattened crystals. Vivianite is notorious for its sensitivity to light, darkening upon exposure. This deepening in colour and decrease in transparency is caused by a chemical transformation of the iron. Powdered Vivianite pigment has occasionally featured in blue oil paints since around Roman times. In fact, in medieval Europe, it provided a slightly more accessible alternative to the expensive lapis lazuli. Due to the unique oxidation process of Vivianite, the blue-coloured paint would become more intense as time went on, and in some cases ultimately resulted in the greenish-tinged skies seen in 13th and 14th century paintings. With a hardness of 1.5 to 2 on the Mohs scale, Vivianite is so fragile and soft that any faceted gems would be difficult to handle safely, let alone wear. The sectile nature makes the mineral generally unstable for jewellery. Whilst you are unlikely to procure a brooch, necklace, bracelet or pair of earrings made from Vivianite, 
there are some very impressive natural specimen formations and pieces that will add intrigue to any collection. Just remember to keep it away from direct light sources in order to preserve the incredible colour and integrity. Thank you for watching that video. Now, my name is Luke and I'm one of the writers here at Salt Shack. Now, what we do here is we teach people geology, mineralogy, gemology, archaeology, paleontology, and all manner of ologies as it pertains to very interesting things that come out of the ground. We'll teach you how something forms or how it gets its colour. We'll tell you how to identify it. We'll tell you diagnostic techniques. We'll tell you all about fakes and we'll tell you the history and maybe mythology and how indelibly etched many of the things that we sell are into ancient folklore and the stories of very interesting civilizations. Now, if you want to better understand these things in order to have a more well-rounded understanding of very cryptic subjects or to better insulate yourself from many of the duplicitous practices that go on within the crystal industry, then why not follow us and join the club?